Okay then gang, so now I'd like to talk about what's known as access modifiers in PHP. So currently, all of our properties inside this class, username and email, they both have this public keyword in front of it. Now that means that we can basically access these properties, username and email, and this method, because this is public and this is public, from inside the class, for example, where we say this username and this email, or this email down here, we can access them this way inside the class, but because they're public, we can also access those properties and functions outside the class as well. For example, where we output the email. So I'm outputting user one email and user two email. And if I save it and refresh, then we can see both of those because they're public and we can access them. And I could also update these. So I could say, for example, now user one and then get the email and change it to something like three. Now that doesn't make sense because three is not an email, but because this is public, I can change it like this. And if I save it and refresh, now we see that the email is three. So it's not always a good idea to allow these to be completely public. Instead, we want to be able to protect these different properties and methods a little bit more. And the first way that we can do this is by using what's known as an access modifier, otherwise known in PHP as a visibility modifier. So currently we're using this public access modifier in front of each of our properties, making them completely accessible both inside this class and outside this class. Now, if we change this to something else, for example, if we put instead of public in front of the email private, then oops, if we can spell it, that is private, then this now is a private access modifier and it's making this property private. Now that means that it can still be used internally inside the class. So this is fine where we access it inside the class and this is fine where we access it inside the class, but outside of the class, we can no longer do that. We can't do this where we can change it and we can't do this even to access it because it's now private, meaning only inside the class can we access this property. So if I save this now, then go over here and refresh, then we get an error and it says it cannot access the private property email right here. So we're trying to access this when we can't really do this. However, if I now just comment this stuff out and if instead I say user one and then grab this method right here, add friend. So add friend to execute that. Now inside this, we access this email. And that is inside the class. Now, even though this is private, we can still use it because it's inside the class. We're not grabbing that private property from outside here. We're grabbing a public function, which is then using the email property inside the class. So this is fine. This should still work. If I refresh, then it's not doing anything because we need to echo this. So let me do that echo and then refresh again. And we can see now we get this statement right here. So that's absolutely fine. So it's good this in terms of not now being able to update this to something like three, which isn't really a valid email. However, the downside is that we can no longer access those properties just to output them to the screen. So we can combat that by using what's known as getters and setters in PHP. Now I'm not going to cover that in this video. We'll see those in the next tutorial probably. But for now, how do you know when to use a private access modifier or a public one? Well, it really depends. If you don't mind a value being accessible outside the class itself, and you don't mind it being changed later on to something else with little control over how that's changed, then you could leave it as public. But if you want to restrict access to a property so that it can't be changed, or that you want to require more control over how it can be changed, then you make that property private. You'd also probably mark something as private if you only intend to use that property internally inside the class itself. Now that's a general rule and it might not suit every situation, but it is a starting point. Now there is a third modifier as well, and that one's called protected, but we're not going to take a look at that now because it kind of requires us to know a little bit more about inheritance. So we'll look at that later on. For now though, we need a way around not being able to access the private properties so that we can output them to the screen. And we might still want to change them as well, but we want more control over how we change them. So for example, we couldn't change an email into an integer. If we change an email, it must be a string that contains an at symbol or something like that. 
and if we change the username then it must be between for example six and ten characters and be a to z characters only or something like that so we want more control over how they're changed and we still want them to be output to the screen so we need a way to do all of this and we're going to do it by using getters and setters and we'll cover that in the next video